Hello. And hopefully, for those of you on Instagram, we are always testing new things here, new equipment. So let us know if you can hear us OK. Um, so we hope you can see us and hear us OK. I am James Marin, Integrated Registered Dietitian, Environmental Nutritionist. I'm Dahlia Marin, Registered Dietitian Nutritionist, and we are both the co-founders of Married to Health. Yes. And so welcome. Uh, we're typically live every other Friday. We realize it is Thursday. We're totally off. We know it's the holiday week. Um, we're typically live, like I said, every other Friday, holiday week. We're talking about stress today, which is great. We're, we're late to this. We're supposed to start at one. We're late because of stress, right? It's like Dahlia had patience. I was on like a billing meeting for like two hours and another one for an hour. It's a busy day. We get it. Mm -hmm. And we're... we know that life is busy, right? And stress is not always a bad thing. Being busy, these are not necessarily things that generate a lot of stress for us. This is a right. positive thing. We enjoy what we're doing. Totally. We enjoy doing these things. Stress doesn't always have to be a negative thing. And we also want to recognize stress is not always mental, emotional stress, right? Mm -hmm. Stress can be physical stress, maybe caused by high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high right. cholesterol, lack of sleep. So you want to consider the different types of stress you may be running into. It mm -hmm. could be chemical stress, right, with something that you're being exposed to. And like we said, mental, emotional stress or even just a little bit of physical stress, like exercise is physical stress. It's not always a bad thing, but we have talked. We've talked in the past. We've mm -hmm. done a video on how too much exercise sometimes when you're dealing with gut issues can kind of peak them. Too much mental, emotional stress can kind of peak your gut issues, especially if you have SIBO or IBS. Um, again, those chemical exposures and that chemical stress with whether it's neurotransmitters or things in your environment, in and around your mm -hmm. body, it depends on how well you process those, right? How well your natural detoxification pathways are. Right. And then it also matters what else is going on. But we wanted to talk about stress this time because we know this could be a stressful time of the year for some people. Yeah, honestly, I mean, we just want to check and say hi. Uh, also, congratulations for those of you that entered the giveaway. We're going to be announcing that. That ended last night at midnight. Um, we're going to be announcing that probably after the holidays, we're going to be picking winners. And so if you got our, our, our guide, our good gut A to Z guide, and also if you entered on Instagram, we're going to be announcing that. So we hope to give three of you awesome community members, followers, a great gift. And, um, with that, you know, the, it's great this time of the holiday, like Dalio was saying, or this time is holiday time. And, um, yeah, you might be like, we were kind of stressed about like giving gifts, right. And we're, we're very minimalist. Um, so it's, it's fun to like get gifts. It's fun to think about all the things going on, but then it can also bring about stress. Um, and what we want to say first and foremost is make sure your care team, if you're struggling with IBS or SIBO or gastritis or whatever else, make sure your care team is addressing stress. Make sure you are addressing stress. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important. It is scientifically studied. It is evidence-based and research-backed. Um, so we wanted to put that out there. We also want to hear from you. Let us know what's stressing you out. You wanted to kind of just use this time to check in with you. We're live with you now. You can you can ask questions and check in. Um, and also, you know, talk about a little bit about what's going on with the holiday stuff, what we're even stressed about. And like Dahlia said, it can be good. And we, we usually try to make sure we pray and meditate and let go of these things that are dwelling in our minds and kind of buzzing in our in our ears. And just kind of let that go and really focus on the present, the here and now, mm -hmm. and not live. Because usually this anxiety and stress is when we're living in the future. Or the past. Or the right? past, like right? Maybe, maybe depression that's causing stress. So right. I think if you are going through something right now, you really want to kind of understand where are stressors coming in to my life. So I mentioned in the beginning different types of stress you might be experiencing. We've done SIBO and stress before. So mm -hmm. if you want to go back and really get in-depth knowledge on it, we have done one. So you can go to our YouTube channel. You can watch that. Um, but we have talked about how stress can really impact digestion and motility or movement of your intestines. So we know stress can do things like put you in that sympathetic fight or flight, right? And when you are in that fight or flight survival mode, your body mm -hmm. is going to downregulate non-essential functions. It is not essential that you digest your food very well all the time. And so your body will say, all right, 
I'm going to downregulate my stomach acid production because I need to pull some energy from there so I can make more of these stress hormones, right? These mm -hmm. um, adrenal corticoids. So I'm making more adrenaline. I'm making more cortisol. Right. I'm making more epinephrine. I'm going to pull from making stomach acid. I don't need as much. I know, yeah, I'll get by with a little bit less stomach acid. So your body might pull from there and you might have a little bit less stomach acid at that time when you're stressed. You might produce less stomach acid. Um, same with bile, right? You might be producing or even excreting a little bit less bile. And we know that stomach acid is important for breaking your food down. It's one of the very first parts of digestion outside of that mechanical digestion and the enzymatic digestion that happens in your mouth. So that's part of digestion. And then, mm. you know, really after that, we're getting more of that chemical digestion with your stomach acid. Um, and then bile plays in shortly after. So physically being stressed can just physically affect your digestion. Um, mm -hmm. Again, you have kind of slower motility as well when you are stressed. So mm -hmm. those are things that just kind of physically anatomically could be happening when you are under some stress. Um, so we really want to mm -hmm. help you check in with your stress. And painting a picture, guys, because this time of the year is notorious for just people being a little more ill, uh, not just uh, mm -hmm. communicably, meaning, you know, microbes, but just non-communicable diseases as well. So chronic disease like diabetes mm -hmm. and, of course, gut issues are on the rise and especially this time of year. And it's the perfect storm, right? It's it's whether we start from the outside inward or into the out, you know, but it's colder. So that's stressful on your body. If you're cold, you know, there's more carbon and what's called PM 2.5 in the air because there's less of the green foliage to kind of absorb all that carbon. Um, there's more fatty foods, oil, you know, full of saturated sugar. fat, cholesterol, refined foods, refined sugars. We're eating more of these sweet treats and desserts. So it's really, we want to check in with you guys and just help you understand that you are in control. You know, it's it's a holiday. We posted on this before, like holiday. It's not a holiday week or a holiday month. It's a holiday. And we know there's there's holidays, there's multiple days. So we, we get that. But for those of you maybe struggling with your gut health or with any other chronic diseases, it's really just being mindful to not create this perfect storm. And so you know, whether it's it's cold outside, and you're like, oh man, I'm cold, and you're sniffling, and then I'm gonna go eat this, you know, cake on top of it, and then oh, I'm stressed from work, and the and kids are driving from me holiday crazy. Holiday party to holiday party. And yeah, maybe you're stretching yourself too thin with time, so then you're not sleeping as much. So you're hitting on multiple factors of stress, and then creating this this perfect storm that then that then's gonna what maybe flare. You're you're gonna enter a flare or you're gonna start entering an, an IBS bout that's like, oh my gosh, I feel horrible and you gotta, okay guys, gotta leave the party, I gotta go home and, and deal with this in the restroom. We want you to prevent that, right? So talking about it, being aware of it is the first step. Now, like how someone commented, no stress over here. Yeah, and we also wanna hear your successes as well. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing to not have stress, right? Mm -hmm. um, if there's some of you that aren't dealing with stress, wonderful, that's how I've been lately a bit is kind of just like things are going to happen the way things are going to happen. I'm just going to do my best. I'm going to work my hardest. And then the rest of it, just kind of let go, let God, just pray about it, meditate on it or whatever you, you guys do to relieve stress, work out. Dahlia worked out today. Um, I know I've been, again, I've been trying not to be stressed. I'm like, okay, let me be present and do what I need to do. But it's the end of the year as, as, business owners, it's big time for us. We're always like, okay, our books in order, accounting, you know, our EMR, all these things you guys don't see that are happening behind the scenes. There's a lot that goes into our practice, right? There's a lot that goes into our team. So, you know, we're, we're preparing for like end of the calendar year going into 2022. So, you know, that's just a little glimpse of what we have going on, but yeah, we just want to check in. And like we said, we know end of year can be stressful and holidays there. There's good stress too, right? Totally. Holidays can be celebratory. 
And whether it is getting together or just chatting with others a little bit more frequently, mm -hmm. um, it could be good stress. But again, it's more on your plate probably than you're usually doing. It's sometimes can be more financially, right, with gifts and with all these mm -hmm. different events and with buying more food and things like that. Um, so we wanted to come here and really give some tips for going into the holidays to try to mitigate some of that stress coming into your good gut, right? We want to try to mitigate and try to prevent any of that totally. stress on your gut health. So keep in mind, I would say, kind of like we educate patients on, we always are trying to think, okay, anti-inflammatory, right? The less inflammation that we have going on in our gut, the better balance of those living in our gut are going to be in. So our gut bugs, right? Bacteria, viruses, fungus, yeast, archaea, we want them to be in better balance. So we want to be thinking what inflammatory habits might be kind of factoring into what I have going on and what are some of these habits that are a little bit more anti-inflammatory. So James mentioned some, right? Hyper-refined foods could be mm -hmm. generating a little bit of inflammation in your gut. Um, we also know that lack of exercise can cause and generate a little bit of inflammation. So we want to say, how can I mitigate inflammation there from a lifestyle perspective? And how can I really get ahead of that? Mm -hmm. um, we know that mental, emotional, physical stress can generate some of that inflammation. So we already talked about some of these different things. Um, and we also want to say other things, right? Like alcohol. I know this is unpopular opinion, you guys. Oh, no. we bring we're the this squares. Up. We're the we're the square nerds that don't drink alcohol. Yes, that is us. I mean, and and you know, honestly, we drink it once in a blue moon for sure. But we understand the impact. So, mm -hmm. yeah, chronic use of alcohol, even if it's one glass or two glasses here and there, but repeatedly, you know, multiple times a week. I mean, and if and again, it, it all depends if you're having already uh, an abundance of stress in multiple areas and multiple factors. If you have some underlying chronic issues and disease. Um, we know alcohol is a huge uh, form of stress. It's a chemical form of stress. So it's, mm -hmm. it is a toxin. That's why you feel inebriated, intoxicated, intoxicated <laughs> right? It, it, there's a reason why we use that verbiage, and it's because it is a, a toxin. So, um, yeah. So, like, and Dahlia, it, can, it can disrupt that balance of who's living in your gut, right? Alcohol also can wipe out some of the good microbes, feed some of the inflammatory microbes. And so, being mindful of alcohol intake during the holidays, especially if it's something that's alcohol plus something else that's either really high in sugar or, you know, high dairy, like an eggnog cocktail or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so really being mindful where, where is that coming in? Um, we know also high fat foods. So, you know, speaking of eggnog and some of these other really rich holiday dishes, they're fine in their balance, right? But it, you <clears> want to <throat> kind of keep in mind, what does the plane of my day look like, right? Right. Am I having alcohol, high fat foods, high sugar foods? I have mental, emotional stress. Um, I haven't exercised. I've had low fiber in my diet. We know fiber is an amazing mitigator, an amazing fighter for inflammation. So what does my fiber look like? Am mm -hmm. I still getting in my, my fiber and my phytonutrients, my antioxidants, these amazing little fire extinguishers for some of this inflammation. What does that look like? Um, now that the sun is in out and present here in the United States, am I sufficiently repleting and supplementing vitamin D? Because mm -hmm. we know low vitamin D can generate a little bit of inflammation as well. So these are things that are important to kind of consider. Is this causing stress on your gut? Are you in a flare? And if so, are any of these things resonating with you where you're like, oh shoot, yeah, I am having more exposure to maybe xenobiotics and plastics, right? That are maybe increasing my body's need to kind of detox itself. Um, so what does that look like for you? And then we want to talk about what you can do about it. Yes. Um, so let me see. So yes. So, so we wanted to give you guys some kind of tangible tips. Um, it's working. It's working. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's my phone. Um, so we wanted to give you guys some tangible tips on this, <clears throat> and we wanted to give you guys um, ways to mitigate it. So during the holidays, we wanted to be able to say you can do different things, like take a walk. So taking a walk, again, if you aren't able to do your regular exercise routine, take a walk. Um, 
take a deep breath and make sure you are practicing that deep breathing. So you're getting in that exercise. You are, um, you are practicing that deep diaphragmatic breathing that can be really soothing to your gut. You want to make sure you are bringing the fiber and the phytonutrients with you. So how are you ensuring that you're having these in your life and you're having these regularly in your routine so you are still getting in those antioxidants? Um, so if you can't guarantee that you know your aunt or whoever you might be seeing for the holidays will have a fiber-rich, healthy, balanced dish for you, how can you guarantee that that's going to be available for you? So bringing something with you could be great for you to do. Maybe you're saying, I know that there's not going to be many veggies. Let me make sure that I bring a beautiful little veggie charcuterie. We're going to be sharing a little bit later today our um, Christmas tree charcuterie. Or it's actually crudite. Um, but how can I make sure that I have that? I'm going to bring that along with me. Um, I'm going to also bring in a couple of different pieces for dinner. So I know mm -hmm. that I'm not having like crackers and a salad, right? I'm going to make sure that I'm having some of those veggie dishes. And then again, trying to reduce stress collectively. So we like to encourage our families, especially if everyone looks like they're in kind of a food coma after the meal, we often are like, hey, let's all go on a walk together. So we are getting in that movement. We are getting in that decreased amount of stress in our gut. So we are really trying to say, okay, let's get in movement. Let's again, walk, take deep breaths while we're walking. So we are trying to decrease stress that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe we are playing games. I know that's something we really enjoy doing in our we're family. Big gamers, not video games, card games, board games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Connect Four. I don't know if you guys have played um, Kent, which is a very fun like group activity game. So it's kind of stimulating the mind, getting maybe thoughts off maybe negative spaces or places or things and just being connected whether it's with your family or friends and just really sharing in that fun and being present in that moment we really find like card games and board games really help us do that so mm -hmm. we love we love playing a good game yeah. as a family for sure and if maybe being around your family is a little <laughs> stressful or triggering no never <laughs> never never um bring someone for support right or yeah maybe plan to limit your time. You know, James and I have identified certain family members we maybe can't spend a long time around. So we plan to limit the time that we spend with them. We right. might say, okay, we're going to stay for an hour. And we know that that's kind of the limit that we have. And after an hour, it's, it's very stressful to be around certain people. So we're going to go after that hour. Um, mm -hmm. So really trying to bring someone for support and understand your boundaries. And probably our biggest tip for decreasing stress in your good gut around the holidays is to say no. Whether that's, and James is the king of this, so I'll let him I'm the king of no. I'm the king of no, guys. Let me, let me give you my expert opinions on saying no. No, I'm just kidding. No, look, no, I think for a lot of us, and especially myself growing up, I, I grew up very much a pacifist. I would constantly apologize for things that I would do, even though I didn't need to apologize. I would constantly feel the pressure to go to places or do things I didn't want to do to make others happy. And at the end of the day, really what we realize is if you're not healthy and happy, like you're not really going to help others to be happy, right? So if, if you're doing mm -hmm. things in sacrifice of yourself, out of obligation, out of obligation, out of whatever, out of, and it becomes this anxiety and the stress. That's not to say, you know, don't go feed the homeless or don't go donate your money or, or really like sacrifice yourself for the greater good. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying on a regular basis, if you are constantly going out of your way for others and it's hurting you to your core where you don't have time for exercise, for all the things we mentioned, right? Like really to take care of your gut health and beyond, then you really need to reassess. You need to reevaluate. And so saying no is a powerful tool that gives you these healthy boundaries. And we are not here saying that we're mental health experts just over the years this has become part of our practice of, of the basics that we kind of touch on with with patients um and again and then we refer out to like therapists and things like that but really this aspect of healthy boundaries really comes mm -hmm. up a lot with our patients because it is so so interwoven into that gut health um into your gut health into gut health in general and so 
You know, that's why when you're stretched thin and you're stressed and you have too much to do, like, oh, I'm not hungry, I'm too stressed, or, oh, I'm going to the mm -hmm. restroom like six times today, and, oh, I, or I didn't have time to eat, and now your stomach feels horrible, that all plays in, right? So saying no, and, and this is one of the big last tips is, you know, saying no is a powerful way to maintain your healthy boundaries, and your healthy boundaries maintain you. So that is huge. That's been real in our life and in many of our patients' life. So like we said, maybe it's saying no to staying the whole time, especially if it's a family member who's mm -hmm. triggering for you. If that's going to cause you so much stress that it's hurting your stomach and really flaring your SIBO or your IBS, right. say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. You don't need to give an explanation. You really don't. Just <laughs> right. simply say, nope, I got to go at this time. It was so nice spending that time with you. Got to go. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's saying no to certain things that you know will trigger GI symptoms. Maybe it's certain foods, right? Maybe you feel obligated like, oh, my cute grandmother or, you know, my sweet aunt made it and I, I just don't feel like I can say no to her. <laughs> they will understand. <clears throat> and if they don't, that's a whole nother conversation to be had. But just simply saying, oh, no, thank you. Um, I don't feel my best when I eat that, but it looks delicious. Thank you so much for making that for everyone else. You don't need to feel obligated to say yes to things that you know you're going to walk away with symptoms of. It's kind of like drinking alcohol, right? If you don't feel peer well pressure. when you drink, yeah, don't fall into that peer pressure. No one else is going to go home with your symptoms except for you. So if it's empowering for you to say, no, thank you. You guys enjoy. I have sparkling water here. Like James and I will do that, right? We'll bring sparkling water with us and we'll make ourselves like a fun sparkling water drink because we just, we don't want to drink. We don't enjoy it. It doesn't make us feel great. We just mm -hmm. don't want to. So saying no is really empowering in that. I say no a lot. So to any of our family and friends <laughs> who have offered me things, I said no. Yeah, that's why. It really just because I don't feel good. And I, I would rather mm -hmm. feel good than make you happy at the end of the day. I'm sorry. That's the truth. Yeah. Because if I feel good, then we're all going to have a good time. And we're all going to talk more and play games more. And it's going to be a better time than me just like, okay, I'll drink this beer, even though I don't want to. And oh, then I feel terrible. So yeah. Yeah, it's important. I think everyone wins at the end of the day. So they do. So hold those boundaries. Say no. No, I'm sorry. I can't be there at that time. I have my workout, but I'll be there right after. Maintain those boundaries. Really tap into understanding what helps you feel your absolute best and know that whether it's a holiday or mm -hmm. every day, your good will thank you for really keeping those boundaries and doing what helps you feel your absolute best. So we yes. hope this has been beneficial. You guys can check out the full talk on our YouTube channel where we talked all about different factors that might cause stress, mm -hmm. ways to mitigate stress a little bit. We talked on inflammation, which can be stress on the body and ways to mitigate that inflammation as well for the best for your good gut. Everyone watching on Instagram, follow us, YouTube, Married to Health. Uh, Instagram Live can be crazy. Everything is there on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So make sure you follow us on YouTube. At comment to any topics or things you want us to talk about next time. Yes. Again, we'll be live every other Friday. This is a special week. We wanted to check in, say hi, just kind of give this message, share our feelings around this message of stress and gut health, and just a couple of tips like Dolly mentioned that you can do. Um, we hope you all have a wonderful, you know, Merry Christmas. So let's celebrate Christmas. Happy holidays. Um, happy uh, Festivus for the rest of us or, you know, whatever you celebrate this time. Maybe we you hope celebrated Hanukkah, a Hanukkah. Weeks ago, or you're celebrating Kwanzaa. We hope it's all wonderful. Yes. So we're sending you love, sending you positivity. Um, we appreciate all of you. We're so looking forward to next year and all the great things we are working on and the great things we want to accomplish for next year. We hope you are, are uh, having those intentions and preparing and meditating on next year and all the great things you want to accomplish. So yeah, we're excited. Yes. Thank you all for watching and joining us again. And uh, we hope next year is your best year of gut health. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We will talk to you next year. See you next year. Bye, Bye everybody.